This video will cover creating and saving your own custom textures inside SolidWorks Visualize, as well as the creation of multi-layer appearances. There's timestamps in the video description below if you'd like to jump ahead to any particular step. It's also worth noting that there's a great library of appearances already built into Visualize, um, and this library gets even larger if you expand to the Cloud library by clicking the Cloud button up top. Um, so I'd recommend course that you explore the appearances that are already existing before putting in the effort to create your own. But learning how to create your own custom appearances is really one of the key things to take your renders to the next level. Multi-layer appearances specifically are useful to represent surface imperfections. In this case I'll be using them to represent fingerprints on a glass screen. So first we're going to need some textures to actually overlay onto our model. And you can, of course, create these yourself. It is important that the textures are of adequate size or that they're seamless so that they can tile nicely. So there's a lot of free resources on the internet, uh, free or paid resources. I'm using a website here called Polygon that has a really great library of textures. Um, most of them are paid, but some of them are free. So if I look through the categories here, I can find surface imperfections. You'll see a variety of different uh, types of surface imperfections here and filter by fingerprints and then find a free version. Uh, most of these websites will still require you to sign up in order to download the texture. And then we also want to use an appropriate texture resolution. Uh, I actually don't need a super high resolution texture here so I'm going to be using the 1K version of the texture. The textures do get stored inside your visualized project, so if you start using uh, high resolution textures all over the place, you'll start seeing the project size balloon and also uh, the file opening times balloon. So uh, I would just suggest to investigate what level of texture you'll need for your typical work. Uh, it all depends on the level of detail and how close you're going to be zooming in in your final renders to those areas. Now once you have your surface imperfections or your texture downloaded, we we'll want to go back into Visualize, and this is my starting state here. Uh, to familiarize you with this model, I have a glass screen that has a solid glass material applied to it, appearance applied to it, and that's showing through to the uh, decal underneath. So before I can do my multi-layer appearance, I'll need to create my surface imperfection texture. So I'll right click and create a new appearance uh, from my appearances tab and visualize. And I'm going to choose generic as the type. There's many different categories of appearances. But generic is one of the more flexible. And let's talk about the texture channels that are available. So visualize supports up to these four texture channels, color, specular, alpha, and bump. As a quick demo to talk about these channels, I have a simple sphere set up inside Visualize with textures loaded in for each channel. So this is a white sphere, which right now is looking pretty washed out. Uh, when I load in the color channel, that's typically going to be the actual image that you want to overlay on the model. When I click Enable, we'll see that all of a sudden that color gradient there is displayed on the sphere. The specular map is a special one. This basically controls the glossiness in local areas. So if I enable the specular map here, we can see that all of a sudden certain areas of the sphere become glossier than others. These will typically be grayscale images. You may also need to adjust the specular color of your material to get this effect to show up. I'll turn off the specular map and turn on the same black and white mask file I was using here as an alpha map. And we can see that this alpha channel controls the local transparency of our texture, and it's also a grayscale image. Bump maps are pretty easily identifiable because they typically have this cyan to magenta color range. But we can also use grayscale height maps as a bump map as well. So we disable the alpha channel, and we'll enable the bump map texture you can see how this adds some interesting depth effects to our model, even though those raised checkerboard faces aren't actually present in the model, we can create that illusion with a bump map, which also saves a lot on our polygon count. 
Whatever bump map you load in, just make sure it's checked treat as normal map. And the bump strength can also be adjusted separately. Now let's take a look back at our model. The textures that I was able to download for these fingerprints, I have one that's going to be my color channel, and then one that's you know, basically inverted from that. So I kind of have to make do with what I've got here. Uh, so I'm going to choose this first mostly black image as my color channel because I want the fingerprints themselves to be white, these smudges. So I'll bring that in. And this is creating a new appearance right now, so we can rename this to my fingerprints. And I have the color channel enabled, so what I'd recommend at this point is I'll drag and drop this appearance in onto the model so I can see what it would actually look like, although you can kind of see it on the uh, appearance symbol there. Then I can make adjustments such as the brightness and also the size of these. So these fingerprints look maybe a little bit large to me, so you can adjust the tiling here to control the size of them. And this is why it's important to have a seamless texture because if it was not seamless, we as soon as we started tiling, we would see uh, sharp creases or seams in the texture here. Uh, you can also shift the texture or rotate it if you want to. Okay. So this is a start, and I'd love to have some kind of depth to it. You can see these fingerprints look completely flat, which they mostly are, but if we add a little bit of a bump map, it's going to cause the light to reflect off them a little bit more accurately. So I don't have a dedicated uh, bump map channel, but I'm going to use this image here, load it in, and check the checkbox to treat as normal map. So if, if Visualize doesn't automatically recognize it because it's not a uh, correctly formatted texture, you can treat it as a normal map anyway. And black and white or grayscale normal maps are supported. so. Typically, you'd expect to see that cyan to magenta, but we can use this here. And we want to play around with the bump strength, the amount of the bump, and also the uh, direction of it. So I'm going to end up inverting the bump here. That, that looks kind of strange, so invert bump. And we also need to sync up these textures. So sync textures is actually what I wanted to do first. That makes sure that the bump map is aligned with the color channel. So I should have done that right in the beginning, syncing the textures as soon as you're going to place in multiple channels. Okay, So now it's kind of hard to picture what this is going to look like on the final model. And I want to make sure that I'm not overwriting the appearance except in the areas of the fingerprints. So that's why I need an alpha channel. I'm going to click on alpha here and load in that same first image again. We don't have a dedicated mask, but I can use this as a mask uh, because we have enabled here this brightness as alpha function. So I may want to toggle off my underlying uh, screenshot temporarily so we can see a little bit of what's going on there and you can start to see how we're only going to be able to see the smudges in the areas uh, where they exist. But we're still right now overwriting our glass. There's no glass at all visible there. Uh, on the model. So to take it to the next level, we want to create that multi-layer appearance. So once I have my surface imperfections texture created the way that I want, I'll right click and create a new appearance. And under the general tab and type, I'm going to set it to multi-layer. and then choose to add a layer from existing appearances. And I'll pull in my glass for the screen that I had created. And then click the plus sign again to pull in the fingerprints. Now I need to drag and drop this new multi-layer appearance onto the model. And we can see its effect. So now we can see the glass is being rendered and we're getting our fingerprints, our surface imperfection, rendered on top of there as well. 
So if I want to go back and turn on my underlying decal, we'll be able to see the end result here. And now we can make tweaks. So if I want to tweak anything about the glass, I would edit the glass appearance separately. And if I want to tweak anything about the surface imperfection, I would edit the fingerprints appearance separately. And that multi-layer appearance will automatically update with whatever changes I make. And if you want to be saving these back, if you think this is something you're going to reuse on future visualized projects, we can do that. Just click on the appearance you want to save. So I'll click on the fingerprints texture here and choose to export it. So I'll say save appearance. And then within my Visualize Appearance library, I can create a new category maybe and call it Surface Imperfections. And then save this as a Visualize Appearance. That's just saving the, the one there. If I want to save the multi-layer appearance, I would have to do that separately. But we can see over now in my Appearances library, I'll have a new category called Surface Imperfections I can use. So this process is the same for any custom appearances that you want to be creating. Hopefully this video was helpful and we'll be continuing with more advanced visualized videos in the future.